Do you like truffles? Maybe it's your favorite dish. But do you know what they truly are and how to find them? Today we are going to have a closer look at truffles' nature and their importance in the ecosystem, but also, how you can find them and the proper way to harvest this incredible fungus. In the words of Dr. Michael Castellano, a world expert on sequestrate and hypogeous fungi, truffles are the most highly evolved portion of the fungal world. But what does this mean? Well, let's have a close look underground to better understand. Unlike some people might think, truffles aren't mushrooms. In fact, they are the fruit of the fungus. We can call them spore packages that are almost always found underground. That is why they're called hypogeas. Hypogeus literally means hypo, below, and geus, ground. But they can also be emergent. The main thing about truffles is that they do not allow their spores to be wind or water dispersed. For this reason, they have to be discovered and eaten by critters in order to disperse their spores. Only after passing through their digestive tracts the spores will be dispersed. This is why we call them sequestrate because the spores are hidden within the spore carp and do not have any active spore release into the ecosystem besides rotting in place. So, when we gather truffles, it's similar to picking apples from a tree. If done correctly, it doesn't harm the tree, but we're just taking the fruit for that season. The tree remains in place, and the substrate called pH thallus, which is in the soil and produces the truffles, also stays put. Everything being equal, it will keep producing spore crops in the future. When people first learn about truffles, their common question is if they're safe to eat. Well, yes, they are edible because they rely on mycophagy, which means they need to be dug up and consumed for their dispersal. What's interesting is that various creatures help spread truffle spores. Some, like the northern flying squirrel, depend on truffles for 90% of their diet. However, Creatures ranging from small rodents to large animals like elk, deer, and even bears also eat them. Humans have turned truffles into a fancy and quite expensive delicacy. However, not all truffle species are suitable for human consumption, especially the scleroderma species, which can cause gastrointestinal problems. Here is some advice from Dr. Michael Castellano. We have a wide range of phylogeny, meaning uh, family relations. Uh, there are truffles across many, many different families of mushrooms that uh, occur in groups that we know are problematic by way of potentially poisonous. Like in the Strafariaceae, there's a group of truffle-like fungi that have spores that are uh, contained within the sporocarp, like the Foliota nubigena, that occurs on rotten wood and uh, high elevation forests in the West, or the Hyminogaster species, which is which are very common across the United States, particularly under quirk, quirkus uh, hosts or phagus, so in the phagaceae, and those are related to the cortinariaceae, and so those are problematic by way of what they might potentially do to uh, a human consumer. So there are some things to be careful of, and it's like any time you are looking for something to eat from the forest, know exactly what you're pulling out of the ground or off the ground if you're going to consume it. Be very uh, confident in your identification skills or uh, consult with an expert before trying things because there are some potential for some truffles to be injurious to humans in particular, even though they all have to be eaten by something. Truffles concentrate lots of micronutrients in their fruiting structures like selenium and copper which are building stones of biological organisms and that is also why all kinds of animals consume them. What about their unique and well-known smell? Did you ever had the chance to smell one? If you have you will know what this is about. Of all fungi, truffles are among those that emit the highest amount of volatile organic compounds. More than 200 of these have been identified so far in various truffle species. Both black and white truffles pump out a mixture of alcohols, ketones, aldehydes, dimethyl sulfide, dimethyl disulfide, diacetyl, ethylphenol, ferranyl, and octanol. The truffle's unique aroma is the result of this set of volatile organic compounds produced by the fungus. Each of these natural jewels is a miniature aroma factory. In 1825, the French gastronome Jean-Anthelme Briot Savarin crowned it as the jewel of the kitchen.
and highlighted it as an aphrodisiac. And it was said that the English poet Lord Byron used to keep a truffle on his desk, confident that its perfume would stimulate creativity and attract the muses. However, for truffles, it is all about evolutionary strategy for their survival as a species. Their delicious aroma and nutritional power attracts animals that benefit from eating them, and they carry them in their intestines and thus disperse them in faraway places. In the early 1880s, the King of Prussia asked the forest biologist Albert Bernhard Frank to study truffles because he wanted to develop a way to produce truffles on a commercial scale. But Frank failed in attempt after attempt, as did all the other enthusiasts who followed him. Still, the dedicated and meticulous botanists' many years of study were not in vain, as plant ecologist David Wolfe recalls in his book Tales from the Underground, A Natural History of Subterranean Life. Frank noticed that truffles never grew independently, but always appeared near oak, hazel, poplar and beech trees. He surmised that the truffle was a parasite. Later he figured out that the two organisms work in partnership. Trees depend on fungi to help gather essential minerals, and truffles, which cannot photosynthesize, receive nutrients from the tree's roots. In 1885, Frank described this symbiotic relationship with the term, mycorrhiza. From the Greek myco, meaning fungus, and rhiza, meaning root. Mycorrhizal fungi extend the plant root systems and these fungi, forge, the soil for nutrients, especially nitrogen and phosphorus. They can also confer drought and pathogen resistance. Some plants cannot survive without their fungal partner because they have become dependent on the fungi for nutrition. Nowadays, truffles are grown in many areas, including Spain, South Africa, New Zealand, North America, and Australia. These farms involve inoculating the roots of host trees with truffle spores and planting them in suitable environments. You can also go on a hunt for truffles in the forest if you know where to look and if you have a trained dog. Yes, dogs can be trained to look for truffles and there are many people who train their dogs for that. But remember, the soil beneath our feet is more than just a medium for truffle growth. It's a living, intricate ecosystem. During your truffle hunt, please be mindful of the impact your footsteps can have on this fragile environment. Stepping lightly and avoiding unnecessary soil disturbance will help protect the countless microorganisms and beneficial fungi that contribute to the health of the forest floor. When you come across a truffle, exercise caution and employ the proper techniques for harvest. A few guidelines to consider. Ensure you have a small garden trowel or a truffle knife with a curved blade. These tools are designed to minimize soil disruption during extraction. Gently excavate around the truffle taking care not to disturb the surrounding soil. A slow and deliberate approach ensures minimal impact on the truffle's habitat. After harvesting, carefully replace the soil you moved to access the truffle. This helps maintain the soil structure and protects the mycorrhizal network that sustains the truffle's growth. Remember that truffles are a sustainable resource when harvested responsibly. By practicing ethical harvesting techniques, you contribute to the long-term health and vitality of truffle ecosystems. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe for more Planet Wisdom.